Hi, it's Karen the Weekend Craftaholic. Thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to show you how I made this little card for a friend and this is using the Hello Bluebirds Otter Friends stamp set as you can see here. I've also got a couple of Distress Ox eyes. This is Speckled Egg and Tumber Glass and that's what I'm going to use just to blend in the circle background as you saw just then on the card. Now I thought I'd do a card video because I've not done one for a long time and I have been getting more and more into cards over the past few months so I thought it would be nice to share one with you as well. Now majority of this video is on fast forward um, just to try and keep it within 10 minutes not too long for you to view. So obviously with something like blending as you saw then um, it's really important when you're mixing two colours really to just go over them twice with both colours just to get that blended effect. Now I really do love this stamp set there's loads of different otter designs as you can see as well as some really fun scripts and this is one of the other brands that I like similar to Lawn Fawn. I'm always attracted to stamp sets that have got puns in them I just absolutely love love it. So you saw me there just choosing which otter to go for. I've decided to use this little cutie. Now I always stamp multiple times mainly because it's well it's very unusual for me to get it right first time so definitely go through a couple of these and I'm just using some of the Nina Solus cardstock as well. I'll put all the links down below anyway so you don't forget anything that I've used in case you're interested. Now I'm going to run these through my die cutting machine before I colour them. I know it's probably not a popular choice. A lot, you see a lot of people colour them first but my die cutting skills are not the best so quite often I, I don't get a very good even margin if you like around the edge of the die cut so where I've got the black outline of the otter for example that little white edge doesn't always work out so great so you can see on the first one for example so many many times I've spent a bit of time colouring, love the colouring effect only to kind of ruin it when I put it through the die cutting machine. So I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong but this is my trick. I always run it through first. It does make it a little bit more tricky to colour in though but it works for me. And you see I've got my little diamond press machine on my desk. That's great for using these for die cutting little sentiments like these. So I generally go for that first off if I am just doing a one off image like this otter, as you can see. You see, I'm doing all of these. Now, if I do end up um, not needing them all, maybe on the first one it was fine. I just keep all of those stamped images in the little pocket with my dies and stamps. So next time round, I've already got them ready to, ready to go. And you see here, I've just shown you I'm using Gamsol to colour these in. This is just normal coloured pencils. And this is fast forwarded, I think, about eight times. So the speed is, is definitely a lot faster on, on the colouring here. And I know it's not a popular choice. A lot of people don't like using Gamsol because of the chemicals. But I've never had any problems with it. Maybe it's because I've always got the fan going in the craft room because it, it's always quite hot here in Australia. But I've never had a problem with the, the fumes or the scent from the Gamsol. And I only ever open it right at the time when I need it and it's it's not really exposed too much anyway. You see here I'm using a blending pen or blending crayon or stamp just to shade that in as well now with the Gamsol. You can see just a little area at the bottom. I just stick that straight into the bottle and then apply it straight on here. I really do think Gamsol's a great product if you've not got expensive colouring pencils um, but you want a great blended effect this has been the way that it's worked for me. Now you can see I've got this little, um, I guess it's a little wave effect for the otter on the water from the stamp set as well as the sentiment that I'm going to use. So I'm just positioning those now just to try and get a feel of um, where I want the placement of these as well. And um, what I'm going to do, you'll see shortly, is I'm actually going to stamp the sentiment in Versamark so that I can emboss it in some silver just to make it stand out a little bit more. As you can see here, I've got my scratch card, my scratch piece of paper. I use this all the time when I'm embossing. I know a lot of people like to use the coffee filters just to kind of capture the excess embossing powder, but this works fine for me, it really does. Before I start embossing, I got this tip from watching Christina Werner. I'm sure you're familiar with her. And because I've got, I am new to Distress Oxides, one of the tips that she says is to always just run your embossing powder over the ink first before you start, because it does take a little bit longer to dry than normal ink. And absolutely spot on. You could see then that some of the embossing powder was sticking just to some bits of that. And now that I've heated it up a little bit and then done the test again, you can see that it flows straight off. So obviously glad that I did that extra step 
step just to make sure that it was a nice dry surface. So you can see now I'm going on there with my sentiments for both of them. I've got the little wave as well as the strip at the same time using the Versamark ink and then just using the embossing powder a couple of times just to get a nice even coat across the Versamark as well. So it's a nice thick sentiment. Now I'm zooming in a little bit here for you to see. I always start by warming the back. Again, this is a tip that I got from Christina Werner and my embossing has been a lot better since doing that. And then this is obviously where the magic happens. I absolutely love watching the embossing powder uh, solidify like that and melt onto the paper. So that's my little wave effect and that's my sentiment done. I always do a sentiment on the inside of the card as well. So whilst I've got all my uh, equipment out, my embossing powder and my embossing ink, I've decided to also do the same on the inside as well, just to give it more of kind of a professional touch as well. And again, it doesn't take long for this little sentiment just to melt onto the paper. This is the Ranger Superfine Metallic Silver that I'm using. And it doesn't take long at all to um, heat up and finish. Okay, so once that's done, all I need to do now is just attach my little otter using some of these little foam dots that I've got. Um, these were from Uniquely Creative, but any obviously any foam dots would do or anything to raise it up on the card. And here I'm actually debating whether to add something else or not. I thought it looked a little bit empty with just the one otter. So I decide to also just um, stamp straight onto the card this little uh, I think they're reeds like water reeds so apologies for it just to be slightly off camera right now but you can see I moved that up and I'm just coloring that straight onto the card as well it's a bit of a brave move from me it could have all gone wrong if I would have made a mistake but I really wanted to add something else that black outline of the otter I felt needed some more black on the front of the card as well so adding another black stamped image really helped to balance that out on the front of the card so that is my card done. I hope you enjoyed that. I inspired you to make a card today. This probably took about 20 minutes to do in total, so not long at all. Thanks for watching.